with the media relentlessly, Hello, Huffington, talking to anyone who would listen. Uh, court TV. One of the people who Arianna, heard him uh, was New York Times columnist Bob Herbert. I wrote five or six columns in a row initially because I was so outraged by this. And the columns got um, a very strong response, and the story began to get uh, picked up again. And I absolutely was not going to stop writing about it. This was not just another story. As the scandal continued to unfold, the defense team began to sense victory. None of these folks were going to let the story die. They weren't going to just turn their backs and abandon the people who were imprisoned in Texas. In early 2003, the pressure began to pay off. The Texas Attorney General began an investigation of the Tulia arrests, and the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals ordered a review of the proceedings. For the Tulia 46, it seemed for the first time that an end to their nightmare might be near. All right, I'll see you around there. Tom Coleman had always claimed that race had not played a role in his undercover investigation. Even as revelations of his misdeeds came to light, he insisted that the Tulia arrests were good. I believe we did everything right, Tulia, everything. I don't think there's not anybody in jail that don't deserve to be there. But in early 2003, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals ruled that Freddie Brookins and three other defendants were entitled to hearings to review their convictions. This was the break the defense team had been waiting for. For the very first time in open court in Swisher County, we're going to be, have the opportunity to present all of this very significant evidence that we've been able to collect now and put it into open court on the record. Freddie Brookins began to dream about life on the outside. When I get out of here, I plan on going, hopefully, to Amarillo College. I'm going to find some school to go to. I want to go and study business. And, uh, you know, do what I should have been doing a long time ago. But I have a lot of goals set. Finally, in March 2003, Justice hung in the balance in Judge Ronald Chapman's courtroom. As the hearing progressed, the undercover investigation was ripped to shreds. In the middle of the hearings, in a development, prosecutors recommended that the court drop charges against all 46 defendants. Judge Chapman later said, quote, Coleman's repeated instances of verifiably perjurious testimony render him entirely unbelievable under oath, end quote. The momentum for the defense continued. See the plate. Three months later, Judge Chapman announced that he was freeing the Tulia defendants on bail, pending a final decision by the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals. The court has concluded that the ends of justice would be met by granting the bonds requested. Technically, the convictions remained on the books, and the defendants could find themselves back in jail. But for now, there was jubilation. Following a dramatic hearing at the Swisher County Courthouse today, retired District Judge Ron Chapman granted bail and ordered the immediate release of 13 individuals.